Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. We're actually in the Dallas Fuel training room and I'm here with Custer. We've spoken a lot previously about stuff like Moira. The first week of the Overwatch League is done. Not the best start for Dallas Fuel, but probably very exciting to be here at last and to start off, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was good to finally get on stage, you know, finally start playing matches, uh, like, officially, so... Um, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't our best set of matches, you know, our match against Seoul, we, we played okay, you know, against a team like Seoul, uh, we weren't, we weren't happy with the result, but we weren't sad with the result, um, but, you know, up against Valiant, we, uh, definitely didn't perform to the, the level we wanted to, so there's a couple of issues that we've sort of run into, so we're identifying those and, you know, looking to fix them. Yeah, we can talk about that because there's a lot of people trying to work out where exactly it kind of went wrong for you in certain areas. So I'd be quite interested to get your opinion. But I kind of first and foremost want to start off with the changes on the PTR. Not only because you were very vocal, uh, vocal about the Mercy changes, but um, you used a bit of Moira. We'll start with the Mercy changes though. You were very like anti-Mercy. You kind of see it want to drop to a certain extent. Like, do you like the changes in that sense? Or do you feel that there's a valid thing around Mercy? Because people are still talking about the res as well. I think um, the way they're nerfing her is they're just making everything in her kit weaker. And I, I don't think that identifies the entire crux of the problem, which is that the resurrect ability is just not a good mechanic to have in the game. Yeah. Um, the ability to, uh, I guess, alleviate a mistake and um, sort of give that sort of gap for players to not play perfectly sort of I think is a negative one and especially seeing as the mercy skill cap is like quite low um it's very easy to get value even with like a low low play ability so I'm, I'm hoping that in the future they you know rethink the resurrect ability it's kind of hard with all her lore but um I'm, I'm hoping that with these changes she just gets weaker and weaker and weaker and it gets to the point where people can justify running other heroes other than mercy yeah for sure and i think that's the main thing is like I think Mercy's always still going to be played in like pharmacy composition. That's a very big thing in NA. Not so much EU when it was like contenders and stuff, but nowadays, you know, Oasis Control Center, you're going to see a pharmacy. Yeah. I guess the main crux of the Mercy problem as well is even if she's worse and more viable, she's just going to be less fun to play as well. Like it, we've spoken to Boombox people like that about saying like she needs like a skill shot ability. She needs something that feels rewarding to actually do because Resurrect just isn't that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. If you add some form of um, interesting ability that is unique and has that skill level, then it's going to make people more interested. The reason that so many people like playing Anna is because her sleep has a very high skill ceiling um, and hard to use, and her grenade is also, you know, hard to use at times. So, if you start adding into the, you know, adding into the equation these mechanics that make her skill ceiling higher and make her more fun to play and more fun to watch then I think people would be okay with it. With right now, there is no, there's no mechanic really within Mercy that makes her like really hard to play. It's just, you know, how can you left click and what's your dodging and game sense like? I think it's very easy, especially with all of the hyper on the Overwatch League for people to look at what the, like a Mercy player that is very invested in the character, which is like fair enough, like everybody has those heroes that they enjoy playing, that they look at the pros and everybody's like, Mercy's bad, she needs like removing from the game kind of thing. So I guess it's really nice and interesting to hear a pro's perspective of being like, it's not that they hate the hero, it's just what it does for the rest of the game. But kind of going on to the whole, like Moira is a really good example of this. I remember talking to Tavik and he said that if Mercy gets nerfed, that puts a lot more pressure on Zen, that you could build teams around a really good Zen player. Is that something you agree with? The main sort of support role of Zen, Anna, Moira, is that going to change at all with the Messi changes if they go through? Yeah, I think um, if if the Mercy changes go through and Mercy just doesn't see as much game time, um, you're going to see the way Zen is played. I think Zen will stay in the meta. I think uh, the Discord is too valuable, but I think it's going to be harder for Zen. I think one of the big things that Mercy provides for Zen is that you have the ability to play, I guess, almost like a Jonak kind of style of Zen where you can play flanky, you can play aggressive. And if you die, you can generally get res by Valkyrie. So that gives you that sort of, that buffer to be able to, you know, do those things. I think if if that doesn't come through, it'll be a lot more punishing to play that style of Zen. Yeah. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, <clears throat> it'll, it'll allow teams to do different things. Maybe some teams will mess around with replacing the Mercy with an Ana. Someone will replace it with a Moira, someone will replace it with, you know, Lucio. So where the meta will finally end up, no one knows, but it'll be exciting. 
Yeah, we'll talk about Moira a little bit as well. This is a hero that we spoke a lot about previously because I think lots of people are very excited to play her. Old stuff around the spots and having a new way to play. Quad tanks on like Horizon, that kind of strategy. Is that really only where Moira is useful? And is she useful to the point that she's going to bring back those strategies a little bit more? That We did see actually like triple tank this weekend with a lot of teams as well running a Moira. Like how viable is that? Is that like... People talk about Junkertown comps and Horizon comps, certain maps having certain playstyles. Is it just one of those that Moira can get into or does she have more viability in the hole? I think in her current spot right now, especially within this Mercy meta, she is very niche. Um, she has, she only plays that, you know, triple tank, quad tank role because that's when she you're maximizing her effectiveness and you, you can see um, the amount of healing that she can put out, the amount of ult she can get, all these, you know, as as... As you add more tanks and as you add more people that she can heal, her effectiveness you know, compounds because um, all of a sudden she's healing more people, she's getting more value, she's getting more ults, she's getting more, you know, everyone can play more aggressive and all that kind of stuff. So as you add more tanks, that's what makes it good. Um, I don't think Moira in its current spot can be played uh, everywhere because of the limitations of her verticality um, and how she has to be a close range healer and all that kind of stuff. So I think for right now, that's probably where you'll see her most, but uh, with the Mercy changes, you maybe you'll see more teams moving away from the dive style and maybe moving more tanks, trying not to play more tanks on more different uh, on different maps. So we'll see. That's quite interesting because I think you you see a lot of um, people almost blaming dive for just being the only way to play at the moment and stuff. So the fact that you're saying Mercy kind of enables that a lot more than people thinking that Lucy and Sen kind of did is quite interesting. And taking Mercy out is going to make it much more diverse, I guess. I think um, we've never seen a meta where Mercy isn't overpowered and Moira's in the game. Um, I think Moira gives the option for people to be able to play tanks. Whether or not Dive just comes back to dominate the meta with the Zen Lucio, I'm not sure, maybe. Um, but I'm hoping that the, you know, the game doesn't go that way to the point where if you're not playing Dive, then you're not going to win the game. Yeah. Um, so hopefully. Yeah. What's been quite interesting to watch Dallas, at least, is trying to work out like the areas it covers. Like for me, it's quite interesting that you have like a world-class Zarya player, world-class Roadhog with Tamu, world-class Diva, but you kind of don't have a player that plays all three. So often it could be like when one person changes, another person has to. Like in your eyes, on the face of it, like what were your problems these last two games? Because I think some people are also going like, this is just Dallas Fuel's problem as if this has been happening for like the last year. But the first two games, what has been going wrong in your eyes? I don't want to go too much into it. Um, I think we've, you know, we've. I think we've almost tried too hard in certain aspects of uh, trying to do too much with the roster. Trying to, um, you know, people say, you know, it's amazing how you have all these quirky strats, and you know, we have we had all these different things that we did on different maps. Um, but you know, obviously that limits you at some point to compared to these teams that goes, you know, what we're going to play dive, and we're going to play dive in every single map all the time. Yeah. As much as maybe dive's not optimal everywhere, they they know what they're doing. They know exactly how to play that that style, so and they can just apply it everywhere. And they're very good at that. While we're sort of spreading ourselves thin in a way. I was going to say you probably had the most substitutions out of any other team, really. Like every map seemed to be like a sub. Whereas you looked at somebody like obviously we don't really see teams like LA Gladiators change because they only have the seven compared to like the ten players or however many that you guys have now. It's very difficult to like. Some teams just do not change at all. Even like London had 12 players and they, I don't think changed or substitute people want. So I guess at the moment it's just kind of trying to find your foundations and then adjusting and iterating on stuff per map or per team that you're playing against, I guess. Yeah, um, I think a good example as well is against Seoul where I don't, when we played them, they don't, I don't think they made a single sub the entire, the entire match. So, um, you know, this is a new league, a new style of play, new form of teams. So there's always going to be teething periods. Uh, you know, it's good that, you know, we're having these issues early mm -hmm. rather than later. Um, so, you know, we we have such a talented set of players within Dallas Fuel. We, we can go in so many different directions. So it's just about, uh, you know, working with our coaching staff and really finding what works for us. Yeah, for sure. And that's quite interesting you mentioned it, like, it's very new. This has never really happened with Overwatch for having substitutions in a game, at least. You know, maybe like you have a set and have to sub somebody in for whatever reason. But like, I guess it was more like does subbing and readjusting the team for certain strategies 
work like if you can manage that well to the point that you're subbing people almost every game then you can remain ahead of the curve because nobody knows what to expect from dallas right yeah because they can't plan ahead if people like you've been subbed in for chips affects the game as a lot but actually goes on to my next question um people when xqc and yourself were brought into the team a lot of people wanted to know well they have chips and they have coco what in your opinion do you bring to the table as a player because i remember talking to you about moira and stuff and me being like are you like the designated moira player and it's like well i'm just still like if there's a new support you're the person that kind of goes to learn it i suppose um i think that's sort of the the big question that a lot of teams not only ours has been sort of asking ourselves you know houston outlaws has a very similar situation to us where they have a lot of talented players but a lot of people that really do the same role so um me and chips share very similar hero pools um so it's it's about finding the balance and how we want to play that um i think in the future and at some point you know there's going to be one person that runs more than the other you know i i joined this team when you have a player like chips playing on the team and i'm coming in to pretty much substitute his role i was very ready to sit on the bench and watch that happen um so you know where where the team will end up and the the benefits that i add compared to the benefits the chips adds plus then you add a harry into the mix of we have three supports and you know you only have two spots for those people um where we'll end up who knows but uh you know it's, it's exciting to see as every team sort of messes around with it. some teams have just started just running two support players some people are playing some person some people at some different points so we got to find the the formula that works for us yeah, yeah for sure. if we have it. because we've only seen two games a lot of teams won all the games some teams lost their games people look at the standings and may go that's how the league is going to look in like a, a month or like the end of the season for you based on how the other teams that you've played or experienced are there any teams that may have not got off to the best start that you think look out for this team especially because they're a lot better than people are expecting but just generally like where do you sort of see yourself at what level like probably like playoffs high playoffs maybe even push for the title and stuff like that but like other teams maybe that people are underestimating that you need to be like just keep an eye on them because they play some really good overwatch um i i think um the standings that a lot of people are giving right now uh at least close to what you, I think, uh, what I'm looking to expect. Uh, I think Valiant uh, impressed us a lot. Um, they, they're playing really good Overwatch. Um, they have a really good core six players that they played mostly against us with some small adjustments. So um, I think they're really strong and they've they've done a really good job. Obviously, you know, we're two games in. It's I don't think you look at the standings and be like, yeah, this is, this is what we're looking at because some teams played really tough teams. Some teams played really easy teams. Um, I think you can... You can just look at the standing, you can look at the matches, sorry, and say, you know, maybe this team's a lot weaker than this one. You know, all the Korean teams are obviously incredibly strong, but none of them, are, I think, have really faltered and yeah. proven otherwise. So I think the standings that a lot of people have in their minds are good. Um, the, the most exciting thing that I've seen is that uh, all the Western teams are at least poking and prodding at the Koreans, yeah. Um, yeah. which is sort of, which is exciting because... I don't think at any point you could watch, look at those teams and be a Western team can't beat them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, a lot of these Western teams are really showing that they have a lot of talented individual players. And it's just about now that we have this much structure, this much um, team around us, you know, all this time to focus on the game. Hopefully we can really uh, pull it together and prove that, you know, Westerns can be Korean in Overwatch. Yeah. And finally, we'll go over like where to find you and stuff like that. But every pro that we've spoken to was a very different journey to how they got there in the first place. Yours is especially interesting this time last year, you were like on Fnatic and then it was just a period of not really hearing anything from <coughs> you. And then you were on like properly on Dallas and it surprised a lot of people. So what was that journey like for you? It must be great to be here, but what is your path to pro? People may be wanting to watch this to be a pro Zinyata or Moira player, like what kind of advice would you give to them at that level? Sort of competitive ladder level, top 500, they want to go further. Okay, I, I like, because once I was already in the scene and I was part of Fnatic, um, that gives you the ability to really gain contacts. Uh, it's one of the things that you know you hear a lot of other players talk to about as well. It's, it is very much about who you know and who, who has respect for you. I wouldn't be on this team if I hadn't you know, played against Kai Kai, who played in Cloud9 when I was in Fnatic. Um, I met all the MB guys at Korea at Apex and that kind of stuff, and I hung out with them. So that was why my foot was very much in the door to join Dallas Fuel. They knew who I was, they knew the type of player I was. Um, so it really helps. So anyone looking to get better at the game, um, 
especially coming from someone who doesn't have that kind of background within like Overwatch. You know, you see a lot of really talented players that really come up through, um, you know, contenders based teams almost at this point, um, playing a, playing ranked on the ladder. It's a great way to get noticed. Um, so just, it's all about getting noticed and playing with incredibly skilled players um, and sort of gaining that notoriety for being one of the best. And then just to finish on, like closing thoughts, Mercy, Moira, all of the stuff that's happened this weekend. And where can people find you for like more sort of main support playing on Twitch and stuff? Uh, if you find me on Twitch, it's just Custa, um, C-U-S-T-A, and same thing on Twitter. Yep, Follow me on sure. Twitter. They're probably the best platforms. Yeah, for sure. And that's pretty much everything we have time for. This is the probably one of the latter videos that we'll put out while we're here. But if you want more, let us know in the comments and stuff. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, do definitely check out Custer. Some great stuff and great comms as well. I think it's very PMA as well. Or you yeah. tried to be at least. I tried to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But until next time, take care. We'll see you then.